Anyone who remembers the anti-SJW phenomena from pre-2016 will probably remember one of the most often used phrases from progressives. The dictionary is descriptive, not prescriptive. This is actually a good point from said progressives, and it is quite true. If you look at an English dictionary from, say, a hundred years ago, and one from today, you'll notice many differences in how the same words are used. This isn't because of any sort of direct language control from on high, saying how these words must be used. This is because words slowly change over time, and they develop new meanings, and they sometimes shed old ones. That is how language works. It's an evolutionary process. There certainly can be authorities that can shape how language changes, but it also changes with everyday use of these words. Now, why was it that progressives were so fond of the phrase, the dictionary is descriptive, not prescriptive, in the first place? It was usually used by leftists when they accused someone of being an ist or of an ism, you know, some sort of discrimination. The progressive would say that real phobia or realism is prejudice plus power. And the anti-progressive would respond by saying that that clearly is not what the dictionary says that it is. And the progressive would respond with that common line. The dictionary is descriptive, not prescriptive. In that short exchange, both sides would be technically correct. So, what's going on here? Why does this impasse exist? The issue is that the leftist is correct, but they're obfuscating. Yes, language evolves. Yes, the dictionary is descriptive. No, that does not mean that your definition is correct. It is identical to how progressives will say that things are social constructs, as if that means that they're arbitrary. The reason why they want to redefine isms to mean discrimination plus power is because it is a definition that serves them better. It allows them to define everyone they don't like as being on the bad side and everyone that they do like as being on the good side. They're dividing things up like this because they know that these words have clear connotations, and if you can automatically define your opponent as having all the bad connotations, and yourself as having all the good ones, then you win before the argument has even begun. It's essentially the equivalent of going to medieval Europe and defining your political opponents as Satanists, and your supporters as Christians. Okay, yeah, so the conclusion there is pretty obvious. The left is extremely self-serving, and they'll twist words to benefit themselves. We probably all understand that, more or less. But this is a lesson that everyone on the right really needs to fully internalize. To put it in the most basic terms, the language that we use is the battlefield. If you can control the language that people are using, you will win by default, because you can control the arguments and the way that they conceptualize and frame those arguments. If you really want to internalize the importance of language, you need to really think about the words that you're using whenever you're discussing something political. I'll go through a few quick examples to show how damaging these words can be to us if they're used improperly, and how we need to think about them. One of the most pervasive words that the left uses today is progress. The usefulness of this word is in its ambiguity. It can mean many different things to different people and in different contexts, but it generally has a pretty positive connotation, to most people at least. The term only really makes sense if you understand the type of progress that is being referred to. For example, we can see some very real and objective progress if we compare infant mortality rates from 200 years ago to today, or if we compare average lifespans over those same two periods. We can also see very clear technological progress. It's so obvious that it almost feels redundant to go into the specifics, but, for example, if you compare cars to today from cars from 1900, they're worlds apart. There are many other examples of this type of clear progress. Average wages, prices of most products, the list goes on. The issue with the word progress is that the left conflates these very clear and real forms of progress with their own political goals. They portray the destruction of traditional gender roles, the ending of life in the womb, the redefinition of marriage, and all their other social goals as progress. Just like in 1000 AD, healthcare was really bad, and in 1900 it was a bit better, and today it's much better, 
So is the case with, say, divorce laws and marriage. The issue here is that the so-called progress that the left is talking about is much less clear, because the only thing that's really progressing is that leftists are coming closer and closer to their goals. What they see as liberation and progress, we see as degeneration. Yeah, refrigerators are cool. 40% divorce rates aren't. And the only connection between the two topics is that the left conceives of them both using the same word. When the left defines their goals as progress, we need to stop and say no. I don't agree to those terms. That's degeneration. There is, however, one possible contradiction you may have already noticed from earlier. I referred to the left as progressives. Abandoning using this term is a bit more difficult, because it describes an actual political belief, and there isn't really any other term which captures that specific type of leftism that I'm referring to when I say progressive. The term leftist itself is a bit overly broad to be too useful, Liberal is simply inaccurate. SJW is a pejorative. It's generally useful to use the terms that people use to describe themselves, and there really isn't any better term, so progressive is kind of just what we're stuck with. However, I do think there is a bit of a difference between using the term progressive and allowing the left to own the concept of progress generally. I do think it's possible to maintain a mental disconnect between the concept of progress and the political label progressive. Another very similar word is rights. Now, I'm not saying that the whole concept of rights is useless. That's a much deeper philosophical discussion that's totally outside of the scope of this video. This is one of those types of words which is used and abused by the left constantly. And the right sometimes uses it very poorly, falling directly into the trap of the left. The term rights has a very positive connotation in most people's minds, and just like with progress, the left likes to define all of their political goals as rights. Economic rights, LGBT rights, women's rights, just as a few common examples. There are many ways to try to defuse the leftist use of these words in a discussion. The most common is to deny that these specific things are rights in the first place. You can also try to deconstruct the philosophical concept of rights altogether. But the worst thing that I've seen far too many people on the right do is say that you're against some sort of category of rights. When you say that, you might as well be saying that you're against goodness. I once heard a Catholic friend of mine say that we're against LGBT rights. No, no. We deny that redefining marriage is a right to begin with. We are for traditional Christian morality, that morality which has been held for 2,000 years. Another similar word is democratic, and this one I have to say I'm taking mostly from Mencius Moldbug. Democratic has an extremely positive connotation in the minds of most people in the West today. If you're making something more democratic, that pretty much means you're automatically making it more holy. The left uses this term a lot to refer to their policies, just like the other two things. They talk about democratic workplaces, democratic education, democratic access. Whatever it is, the left likes to spice it up by adding democratic onto it. Undermining the concept uh, of this term, or any other of those terms, is a useful strategy. But again, you need to define the term itself back into your favor. The term democratizing and the term politicizing are essentially synonyms, yet they hold completely opposite connotations. Point this out. Say that, what, do you want to politicize education? You want to make these partisan things? You want to make them divisive topics? To paraphrase Mencius Moldbug, we talk about George Bush or Obama politicizing the Justice Department, but how about we refer to it as democratizing the Justice Department? One other example which I see misused by conservatives constantly is theocracy. I constantly hear conservatives and liberals refer to any government that has a state religion as a theocracy. Now, as we went over before, language does change, so I guess you could say that that's the modern definition Though, that's a stupid definition, and it's not useful. The traditional definition of theocracy is a government in which the legislatures are clerics. That is not how it is generally used today. 
how it's used today is any sort of state which has a state religion, or often how it's used by leftists, is any sort of state which is influenced by religion in a way that leftists don't like. This is a term which conservatives really need to just reject. We cannot accept this leftist redefinition. If you say that there's a certain Catholic underpinning to your political goals, and someone says, but isn't that a theocracy? You need to deny outright that that's a valid definition. All states have state ideologies that are either explicit or implicit, and the only difference between a theistic and a non-theistic state ideology is that progressives have declared that theistic ideologies are no longer permitted, at least if they're to the right of what they would like. And it certainly isn't because theistic ideologies are any less rational. At the very least, there's far more evidence against left-wing gender theory than there is against the Trinity. These are just a couple of the basic terms that the left uses a lot. My overall point should be clear. Do not accept the terms that the left lays out for you. You must reject them. You must reject their framing. You must work around it. If you allow the debate to be, should we or shouldn't we give X group rights, then you will have already lost. Thank you everyone very much for watching, and I would like to especially thank my regular viewers. YouTube has just approved my channel for ads, so I figured if they think I'm big enough to make money, who am I to argue with them? So I've launched a Subscribestar and a Patreon. If you'd like to support my content, I'd really appreciate it. The rewards on both platforms are the same, and of course I'm new to this, so if you think there's different rewards that I should offer that you'd prefer, feel free to suggest it. Thank you everyone again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and most importantly, please share these videos with anyone who you think might find it interesting. Bye.